Good afternoon and welcome to our Wheaton Christian Center West Austin campus. We are so delighted that you're here today and we know that God has something special just for you today. This service is custom made just for you. So I want you to tune in, listen in on what the Lord has for you today. We're starting out with Deuteronomy 28. This is talking about the blessing. Listen to this. It says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that I am giving you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and bread boards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. Now it continues with more of the blessings, but I wanna to talk to us about that because this is very important in the day that we live in. When we think about the conditions of that scripture, it says, if you obey, if you obey what? If you obey the word of the Lord, you're going to hear the word of the Lord from our founding pastor, Pastor Carlton Arthurs today. And when you hear that word, receive that word and then do that word. And so when you do all of that, you receive the blessing that God intended when he inspired those to write this scripture. So that's what's happening. We are the blessed of the Lord because we obey, we follow through on what God has spoken to us. Amen. So I want you to get ready to praise the Lord today because he is the God that blesses. He is the God that wants to see his people prosper and be in health, even as our souls prosper. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you today for the blessing. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us the power and the desire to do what pleases you today. So God, we thank you that we are not just hearers of the word, but we're doers of the word. And in that, we walk in the blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Be glorified in this time of worship to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. among the people I am blessed among the nations I am blessed because I am loved by you oh Lord we say I am loved and highly favored Saved by the grace of a mighty Savior. I am blessed because I am loved by you. Oh Lord, no weapon formed against me will prosper. No curse could ever take his promise from me. When hope is gone and the darkness has fallen, I will still believe, I will still believe, yeah. And I'm gonna rise up, I'm gonna rise up, I'm gonna rise up and call myself blessed. I'm gonna rise up, I'm gonna rise up. I'm going to rise up and call myself blessed. Yeah. I am blessed among the people. I am blessed among the nations. I am blessed because I am loved by you. I'm so glad about it. Yeah, we say. I am loved and highly favored, saved by the grace of a mighty Savior, yeah. I am blessed because I am loved by you, oh Jesus. 
Just thank him for the blessing today. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing. We thank you for the blessing. Oh, the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing that with me. The Lord bless. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen, we say. Amen. 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 May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand 
generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning and the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you he is for you he is for you come on he is for you he is for you he is for you oh yes he is hallelujah amen we say And your family and the children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is in the morning in the morning and the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 not against you he is for you yes amen Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Wheaton Christian Center Chicago Campus Viral Services. We are so delighted to have you join us today for service, and we pray and hope that you are safe as we're sheltering in place, and we're just thankful that you tuned in to watch the service with us today. And we would like to take this opportunity to welcome our first-time visitors that are viewing our services today. We know that God has a special word for you, and we know that you're going to be blessed by the word of God today. And even though we're not physically together, we know that we're going to also be blessed because of you watching the service. I just have a few announcements for you and we want you to mark your calendars for every Thursday is the Chicago Campus Bible Study be it conference call and you can see the number on the screen there and we would love to have you to dial in and listen at the message from Pastor Carlton Arthurs because Pastor is teaching a life-changing a relevant message for today in reference the end time. So please join us on Thursday nights at seven o'clock so you can be blessed. And there are many other opportunities that we have that you can dial in and also be a part of our multiple opportunities for prayer. So if you would go to the WheatonChristianCenter.com website and you can see the multiple times that you can join us for 
prayer. And please join us as we pray together as we're sheltering in place and allowing God to speak to our hearts in so many different ways. And again, I just want to thank you, your first time visitors, for worshiping with us today. And now we're going to have an opportunity where you can be a blessing to the ministry as you can give your tithes and offerings above your tithes and offerings, whatever God really lays upon your heart to share with us today, because we know that God blesses at the point of giving, and God is always a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And as we seek God, even in our giving, God is going to multiply the seed sown. And ways in which you can give to the ministry is you can go to the website, wheatonchristiancenter.com. You can press the Give button, and then you can look for the West Austin campus, and you can give that way. You can also text to give, and the text number is 84321. And you can always mail your gifts in to Wheaton Christian Center, and that is Wheaton Christian Center, P.O. Box 88880. Carol Stream, Illinois, 60188. And at Wheaton Christian Center, as we give our best to God, we have a confession that we make over our finances. And our confession goes as, Heavenly Father, I worship you as I obey your word in giving and receiving. I believe that Jesus, who is my great high priest, worship you in my behalf and pronounces my tithes and offerings blessed and multiplied according to your word so that all of my needs are abundantly met, not in a miserly way, but according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I have no lack, only God's abundance and Abraham's blessings are mine. Be blessed. Well, today is a day where we worship and celebrate the Lord's Supper as a church family. I know it's a little different uh, because we're online and some of you have came and you have received your, your communion elements. We want you to get those out right now uh, because we are going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. That is uh, one of the things, one of the sacraments that we have as a church and Jesus instructed us uh, to do this as often as we would, as often as we will to do it in remembrance of this sacrificial love. And so we're going to do that. Uh, if you didn't get the elements, you can easily get some, uh, some bread or a wafer of some kind and uh, some juice. We recommend the fruit of the vine, uh, but go ahead and uh, get some bread and juice and you can participate with us. The table is the Lord's and the feast is for his disciples. That all those who with true repentance have forsaken their sin and look to Christ alone for salvation partake in this holy observance for their soul's comfort and delight. Reading from Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more? shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, right now, we want to say thank you for your body broken and bloodshed. 
Thank you, Lord, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Lord, may we never forget that our sins, which were many, are washed. You have dealt with our sin problem, and we are so grateful. We thank you, Lord, for demonstrating your love. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We look forward to that day when we will partake with you in a new way in the manifested kingdom of God. I want you to get the wafer and hold it and we will all partake together. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of life which came down from heaven that we might live and not die. For he who hath the Son hath life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Let us take and eat. Let us feed on him in our hearts by faith. Let us walk in divine health, for he says, my flesh is food indeed, the essence of what nourishes, strengthens, and sustains. Let us live before God and man, pleasing discerning the Lord's body until he comes again. Let us eat and let us be truly thankful. Likewise, after supper, he passed the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. God through the blood the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us take and drink knowing that the Savior's blood affects the remission or sending back of our sin. Let us boldly approach the throne of grace because the blood is sprinkled upon the mercy seat, giving us access to the holy and righteous God. Let us approach God boldly that we might obtain mercy and find help in our time of need. Let us drink and let us be truly thankful. Somebody say, thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood that washes every sin, every shame, everything that you would regret. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness, and we stand before God holy as his children. Amen. Praise does the enemy. Every praise belongs to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one of
It's a delight, an honor, and a privilege to come to you again with the Word of God. I believe the Holy Spirit of God has brought you to receive this Word, and the Holy Spirit will bless you and will cause you to increase in your walk with God. And so, let's get into His Word. We have been teaching on this glorious subject, very intriguing, very interesting subject. What has Jesus to say about what's going to happen? What has Jesus to say about what's going to happen? We are convinced that Jesus has something to say to all of us in these days because it is as though we are at a, a threshold, as, as though we are going to witness something different in our life's experiences. And we are, many of us, wondering just what's in the future. What is God up to? What's going to happen to us? We've seen phenomenal changes in what's happening in our world. We've been visited with a, a plague, a pestilence that's different from anything that we've experienced. We are wondering if this deadly thing will keep hovering over us. Is it going to take us out one by one? Uh, is this thing going to peter out? Are we going to find a cure for it? We are uncertain. And so it is good that we have an authoritative voice to speak to us. And we can rest assured that we are going to get it accurately and there will be no mistakes. And if we are tuned in, we will get the wisdom of God as to what's going to happen. We uh, spoke in terms of the Savior Christ, that he speaks as God does. He speaks for God. The Word of God says, really, if you hear from Jesus, you hear from Almighty God. So, what has Jesus to say about what's going to happen? We are tuned in to Almighty God to hear what God himself, who made the universe, who made you and me and all of us, and who rules in the affairs of men, and who understands not only the things of time, but who understands eternity. We can hear from God as we tune in to Jesus Christ in our everyday lives. Jesus, it's most interesting, the, the person of the Son of God, as the third person of the Godhead. We quoted to you the fact that John chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 3, says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. We can get the mind of Almighty God. God visited us in the person of his Son. Now that was rather offensive. Even the suggestion of that was offensive to those who were the religious powers in the day of Jesus. But that's exactly true. The eternal God visited us in the person of his Son. Jesus says in the 14th chapter of the book of John, and uh, let's, let's go there. And again, I remind you, keep your Bible nearby. Get ready to reference the Word of God and preferably, as I see it, a book that you are friends with. Uh, 
use the electronic things if you have to, but the book is, is most beneficial in the sense that it can become personal to you. Your notes could be in there, underlining and emphasizing what the Spirit of God speaks to you. So, uh, in, in the 14th chapter of John, uh, the, the Savior was asked by one of his disciples, Lord, show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied. And Jesus answered this, this apostle and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Uh, I quoted John uh, chapter 14, where the, the, the apostle asked him, Lord, we don't know where, so I told him, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, verse 6, John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him, and have seen him. Another disciple, Philip, said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied. It, it suffices us. Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus answered, have I been so long time with you and you have not known me? Have I been so long time with you and you have not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say? Show us the Father. You see, that made what Jesus of Nazareth had to say very equal to whatever the Father wanted to say. That's why the Word of God says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All that was in the Father was in Jesus. Jesus spoke often that he could do things that only the Father could possibly be expected uh, to do. When they were crucifying him, and Peter went after those who were arresting him, he said, Peter, hold everything. Hold it, Peter. Don't you know that if I wanted to, I could summon 12 legions of angels. That is 72 thousand angels. What is beck and call? See, he was co-equal with the Father. So this matter of what has Jesus to say, what has Jesus to say about what's going to happen, we can know from Almighty God what's going to happen. And we've been dealing with this in the Word of God. See, over and over, this, this likeness, this oneness with God the Father is repeated in the Word of God. Jesus was God coming down here in the person of his Son. The eternal God in his eternal glory, did not come down here because we couldn't stand the presence of the eternal God in his transcendence and in his eternal glory. We couldn't bear the sight. We, we, we would die in the presence of God. But Jesus was God projecting himself in our likeness, so that Jesus understands our humanity, 
He knows what perplexes us. He knows our limitations as to what's going to happen. And Jesus answered our questions along that line. The Word of God, as I said, likens Jesus to Almighty God the Father. In the book of Revelation, uh, the, the book of Revelation, it, it makes reference, in the, fir- in the very first chapter, it makes reference to Jesus at Revelation 1 verse 8. Uh, it's speaking about Jesus. At verse 7 it says, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also who pierced him, and all the kindreds, the families of the world, will wail because of him. Because now he's coming in his transcendence, in his glory, the glory which he had with the Father from eternity past. Now he's coming in power and great glory. It says, all the earth will wail because of him. But no, listen to verse 8. Revelation 1. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come. That's saying that he's eternal, which is right now, which was from, there never was a time when he was not, and who is to come, to come among us now and transform us and bestow us with that same eternal grandeur that he has. He says that where I am, there you may be also. And listen to this. Which was, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. There you have it. It's talking about Jesus. It's talking about the one who was pierced, every eye shall see him. They are also who pierced him. And all the kindreds of the world will will because of him. It's talking about Jesus. And then it goes on to say, even so, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. In the original, it is Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Elohim. He is named Jehovah Elohim in sacred scripture. So, what has Jesus to say about what's going to happen? We are hearing from Jehovah Elohim. What's going to happen? Well, we were looking at some of the things that Jesus told us in answer to the question. What's going to happen? How, when shall these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? We remind you that he was answering a question about the destruction of Jerusalem and about the grand finale. When he comes and takes over, what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And he was answering those. Uh, we, we, can, we can see s- several of his answers. Uh, he spoke concerning uh, the first thing he said was a warning against false prophets. 
false, false messiahs, deceivers, take it that none deceive you. He spoke of, in, in, in the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, verses 6 and 7, he spoke of wars and rumors of wars. What has Jesus to say about what's going to happen? Just listen up. He says, I'm telling you, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. He spoke of these things being the beginnings of birth pangs. That's what we emphasized the last time. These things are the beginning of, of sorrows, birth pangs, travail. Now, there's one thing I, I keep trying to emphasize to folk is there was a time when the, the Church of Jesus Christ, the Word of God from Jesus Christ, the work that the Son of God had, had, had done was many, many centuries back, 2,000 years ago. That was 2,000 years ago. But time has moved on, and here we are now. And we can actually cite some of the things that our Lord said would come to pass. And we don't have any, we're not wondering as to whether or not these things will in fact come to pass. Because they are too blatant, they are, they are too obvious. You can't escape them or they are here. They weren't here before, but they are here now. And so, what Jesus has to say about what's going to happen has taken on an urgency. What shall be the sign? When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Well, it's 2,000 years closer and some of the signs are rather obvious now. For example, the Lord told those Jews, the Jews, the Jewish people, the Lord told them that they would be exiled and that they would experience hardships around the world. Well, that's history. I mean, they were visited with the worst hatred from the, I would say, the worst antichrist that, that, that we have seen among us, Hitler. And God told them that he'd bring them back to the land in unbelief. I think it was uh, Alexander the Great, one of his lords uh, was telling him something about God and he said, you give me one proof that there is a God. And his answer was, the Jew, sire, the Jew. There it is, you see. We've seen fulfillment of what God has to say in his word. By the way, whenever we read the Bible, and this is the reason why the Bible is such an important book, and this is the reason why people have been hated and criticized and tormented because of this word. That's the reason why men have been burnt at the stake because of this word. Because the Bible is different. Because the Bible is the word of God. Jesus spoke and he was the word of God. The word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him. And without him, Jesus was not anything made that was made. So God speaks when you look at Jesus Christ. He's the sum total of what is in the word of God. From Genesis 
to Revelation. Jesus, our Lord, is the sum total. This is God speaking to us. The Word, that is, the eternal Logos, the Word of God, became flesh and dwelt among us. And so he speaks and we have everything that God would tell us about himself. He tells us about the one that is to come, the Messiah. And so if you want to hear what has Jesus to say about what's going to happen, get close to this book. Live in this book. Live in the word of God. Let it be to you as necessary food. Hunger. Ask, I, I, I ask God, you know, I do. I said, God, give me a hunger. Give me a more intense hunger for, for your word. Give me a more intense hunger for what the Holy Spirit of God would say to me and through me. Because it's they that are hungering and thirsting with, that will be filled. So Jesus, he, he answers the question, when shall these things be? And we, we see here of wars and rumors of wars. And then he says, these things are the beginnings of sorrows. He says, don't get too troubled about these. These things are the beginnings of sorrows. And then he goes on to say that there will be persecution upon the people of God. Well, the, the church has never been without it. The world has never been in love with the church. You see, we are serving different gods. The Bible says that the vast majority of humanity serve the God, small g-o-d, of this world. He is the evil one. He instigates every evil thing. What we are experiencing now with the upheavals in, in, in our midst because of the terrible thing that the police officer did in killing that poor man and all of the, the horrors that have ensued, the killings, the muggings, the stealing, the, oh, the horrendous things. These things are the works of the evil one. These are the things that the enemy is forecast to do. The word of God says that it will come to be like this. They will be envying one another and hating one another. The, the hatred that is in our country today and in many parts of the world speak, the, the hatred speaks to the fact that Almighty God's word is true, that what the Son of God says is indeed the word being made flesh, manifesting his own truths to us, speaking to us, that he's saying some things to us about what's going to happen. So we, 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 we look and we hear what Jesus has to say. He says that there'll be persecution. Matthew 24, verse 9, he, it, it, he says so. He says that the people of God will be persecuted. Now, in other places, he says it too. You know, all that will live godly in the world, in Christ Jesus, will suffer persecution. They'll deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, let me tell you this. The church, someone said this, I'm quoting, I don't remember the source. The church has never had a greater influence on the world than when it had nothing to do with it. You strike out to live a different lifestyle. 
and you'll get flock. You will be hated of all men, Jesus said, for my name's sake. It's because of your association with Jesus that it's coming. The, the Savior Christ clearly says that there will be, they'll deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. It'll get so that <laughs> if you understand what the word of God teaches, you will have no hiding place. As a matter of fact, right now, with the electronic things that you have, with that cell phone that you carry with you, they can find you. Make no mistakes about it. And anywhere you go on planet Earth. See, nations will eventually we'll get to it as soon as we go a little further in about what Jesus had to say. We'll get to know that this world will come under one who will have political control, who will have religious, that is, who will demand that you see anything relating to God in him. This one that is to come, we'll teach about it as we go on a little further. You will understand, but, but my brother, my sister, that these things are going to happen. We've been blessed in America because America, you see, for some reason, although there were those who hated the gospel way back then, those who were planning one world government way back then and the founding of the nation, although that's true, the Christian message took dominance in America. And that's why America galloped ahead of the rest of the world. Because, by and large, there was a fear of God in the people and there was a reverence for the word of God. There was something about identifying with the church that Jesus Christ died uh, to, to bring into existence. There was a reverence that's become seriously lacking in our day and time. And we have been very comfortable. You could stand on the street corner and preach and thank God, I think to some extent it's still so. Although in these days, you have to be careful what you say, because if you preach the naked word of God, that's hate speech to many in government circles. So what Jesus is saying here, get it. Because you, can't, you and I, we can't escape it. You will be hated of all men. They will deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you will be hated of all nations. Talk about no hiding place. There will be no hiding place. We have to understand where we are now. We have to get to listen to what Jesus has to say. What has Jesus to say about what's going to happen? I believe God is really dealing with you, working with you. I believe he really wants to draw you closer to himself. He wants to bless you. He wants to make you know that nothing will come your way. But he will not be right there to help you with. God bless you. We'll continue as the Lord leads. My friend, God's word is true. There's one way. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I, no folk object to that, was with Jesus. Jesus is the only way to God the Father. Jesus is the only way to eternal blessedness. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He is the 
only salvation there is. His name, by the way, means salvation. And there's that. any other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And we need saving. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ to be the controlling one of your life, you need to enter in. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to lead you in a prayer. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I offend you and have offended you in thought, word, and deed. I know that I stand guilty before God but I understand your love, that you sent Jesus to take my guilt upon him and to die as though he were the guilty one. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And I want to accept Jesus Christ, your son. Right now, I open my heart, Jesus, I give myself to you. Come into my heart, Lord. Take over my life. Thank you for shedding your precious blood to save me from my sins. You have me on your hands now. Thank you, Lord. I'll be a part of your body. I'll be a part of your church. I will read and live by your word. And I will listen to hear what you have to say about what is going to happen. Thank you, Lord, for my salvation. Amen. You pray that prayer, Christ is now your Savior. Get baptized in a good church and get locked in with the people of God and get to study the Word of God with those whom God will send to teach you and grow in the Lord. And be ready when He comes. God bless you richly. The Lord bless you keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name.